In this video, I want to explain to you why you should strive for redundancy rather than fear it. Sounds insane? <laughs> Probably is a little bit, but it also works. Now, before that, welcome back everyone. Nice to see you. Well, I don't really see you, but I've seen that there are a few more subscribers. There's a lot more views in the last couple of weeks. Thank you very much for that. If it's the first time for you here, my name is Kyle Liefert, and we build a community here to learn, lead, and live. Redundancy is something that's inherently very scary at the best of times, and especially now in the year 2021, where we've just lived through a pandemic, and in most places are still right in it, a lot of people lost their jobs. I don't want to take anything away from that. Those are very difficult times. Our thoughts are with you and I'm convinced that we are getting back to a better business and your talents and skills, they are still very much needed. I promise we come back to that, but let's do this. I'm sure we all know somebody who comes into a new job and they want to hug all the knowledge, all the skills that are related to the job. They want to hug all the information around it. And of course, the credit too. There are a few very obvious problems with that. First of all, nobody works 24-7, 365 days, 366 sometimes, days in a year. We all take holidays. In most companies, it's mandatory to do so. And once they do, things break a little bit because they hugged all the knowledge and information and without them, nobody knows exactly what's going on. And that builds up resentment, both in the people who work for the person, but also their bosses. And even if that resentment doesn't lead to any immediate consequence for themselves, it makes sure that you stay put exactly where you are. Nobody else can do the job. You are the only one. And that's how people will treat you. And if you are unlucky, then you will do this exact job for the rest of your life. And if you are lucky, well, then somebody figures out a better way to do it without you. Compare it with this, somebody starts a new job. And of course, first of all, they find out exactly what needs to be done. They also find out the jobs that only they can do at the present state of the company. And they get to it and they put the company in a better shape. And after that, they figure out how to do exactly the same job with less time and less resources and maybe even in a different way that other people can do already. And even if they don't, they then in the third step find somebody who loves doing exactly what they build in that job. And then they suddenly have options because first of all, they now have the capacity to run this cycle over and over again and make more improvements in other areas of their responsibility. But more likely, they also have the opportunity to expand their area of responsibility. And even if they don't want to do that, they suddenly have the option to go somewhere else and apply their talent that they learned in this job, in this workplace, somewhere else. But see, now we come back to the pandemic because all the while you have been doing this, your job is probably the least at risk of redundancy because you've demonstrated continuous improvement. You've demonstrated continuous learning. You have demonstrated flexibility. And those are all traits that in positions throughout the world in the 21st century, and especially in leadership, are very relevant and very sought after. And this is why you should strive to make yourself redundant. This is why every time I start a job, my first task is to make myself redundant. By the way, you can actually do this right now. You can make yourself redundant right now by clicking the like button because that gives you the capacity to do something completely different or something ridiculous like watching another video of mine. So I will see you over there. Mm -hmm.